So we're going to hear what Kate Forbes has got to say about the conversion therapy ban proposed in the Scottish Parliament. It'll basically amount to outlawing the message of Christianity in certain uh, contexts. I mean, forget anything about electric shock therapy or whatever. It's actually about having chats to people. So here's Kate. It, the second thing is on conversion therapy, and I have given my unequivocal support to uh, plans to uh, ensure that we ban conversion therapy because it is abhorrent, it has no place in modern Scotland uh, and it's certainly something that I'd be happy to work with yourself and other members of Out for Independence uh, and other members of uh, the SNP in Parliament to ensure that there is uh, an effective ban. <laughs> So Kate gives her unequivocal support to the plans, saying conversion therapy is abhorrent, no place in modern Scotland. Now let's just clarify what Kate is saying is abhorrent. It would include things like, for example, Kate, the minister of your church, speaking to someone who came to see them and said, I'm starting to experience homosexual attractions. I really don't want to act on those. Can you help me, please? And the minister might say, yes, I'll help you with that. Okay, let's have a chat about that. Then that minister would be a criminal. The fact that the person wanted that conversation no defence. Maybe, you know, Kate's parent in your church, maybe their five-year-old boy starts putting a dress on and dad says, no, come on, boys don't wear dresses. That dad would be a criminal. Maybe it's one of the parents, let's say a teenage girl, says, oh, I think I might be boy, a boy. And mum says, no, you're not. You're our daughter. You're a girl. Come on. That parent, again, would be a criminal under this uh, proposed legislation because it covers any attempt to change someone's sexuality, gender identity, gender expression, including any attempt to suppress those things. So even if someone's, you know, you're not trying to change their sexuality, you're just trying to help someone to not act on it, that would be classed as uh, suppression. And any sort of comment or advice, including within the family home, would be covered by it. Now, Kate's previously said she thinks a conversion therapy ban needs to be targeted, which seems to indicate that she's got some reservations. She wants it just reining in a little bit. Uh, but in this interview, she doesn't say that at all. But the interview we're going to watch next, she does bring in some reservations again, I think. And the other thing I'd say as you watch this, I think Kate Forbes is not quite the smooth and assured performer that she normally is. She seems a little bit stressed having to give these answers. The Scottish Government's committed to introducing legislation by the end of the year on ending gay and trans conversion practices. If you're First Minister, will that legislation on banning all conversion therapy go ahead. I've already stated that I think conversion therapy is abhorrent, that coercion is abhorrent, and that I will continue to support um, banning uh, conversion therapy. I made a, you've made a distinction about coercion. Just to be clear, will you ban conversion therapy, whether by coercion or consent? Well, I have said that we've obviously not... It's a really simple indeed, question. ..but we've not legislated yet. So we've had the reports, and I think it's critical that I reflect okay. and listen to those reports okay. and take that... Flight right, well, I'll give, you the, I'll give you the report because the detail on this is really important. The expert advisory group on ending conversion practices commissioned by the Scottish Government said this, quote, We are clear that... As they constitute a human rights violation, it is not possible for individuals to genuinely consent to conversion practices being carried out against them. So I ask you again, will you ban all conversion therapy, be that coercion or consent? Well, and my commitment to you is to look carefully at that and to take the legislation forward. What I'm not going to do, because I don't think any government has done that yet, is to proceed the I, normal process of the legislation. Yeah, it's, I, I'm just asking for a clear answer here, I'm going to ask you again. My clear answer to you uh, is that I think conversion therapy is abhorrent, it doesn't have any place in Scotland, and the legislation must ensure so, that it is targeted and ensure that so it takes that to into be, account. To be fully clear, will you commit to ensuring there are no exemptions to a ban on consent or anything, that there is no exemptions to banning conversion therapy I, in I Scotland? I think conversion therapy, full stop, is abhorrent. And so in terms of the legislation that would be introduced under my leadership, it would reflect the fact that conversion therapy okay. is abhorrent. Right, OK. So you're saying if someone by consent wants to have their sexuality changed, you think that they should be allowed to do that? Is that a legitimate thing? No, so you I, think, I think it shouldn't be allowed? I think people should be allowed to live freely as they choose. <coughs> And I do not think 
that there should be uh, that there should be con conversion therapy uh, in existence in Scotland. So do you think then a gay man, adult man, if he wants therapy to change his sexuality, should that be allowed or not? Well, it's 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 his choice, um, but I do not think we should allow conversion it's therapy. It's his choice. Well, he, we should not allow conversion therapy in Scotland. That's so, that's so right. But you, you know, just said it's his choice, and this is all about whether you're going to ban it or not. No, I'm because because my position on this is that people should be allowed to live as they choose in a free, tolerant society, and I think the conversion therapy bill should reflect that. But you're also asking me this in advance of the parliamentary legislative process proceeding. Okay. We've had the evidence. We need to reflect on the evidence and introduce a bill that reflects that evidence. OK. Now, listen to that. It sounds like Kate thinks consent should be an exception. But if it's an abhorrent and there's no place for it in Scotland, it doesn't make sense to say, but people can consent to it in any case. I mean, Kate Forbes is usually so clear in her communication, isn't she? And in, in the, her meaning as well, and the, the logic. But what she's saying here seems to me just to be a complete muddle. She's trying not to answer the question. And I would say in doing so, she's teetering on the edge of dishonesty. Now, other people might watch that and think, oh, that's really clever. Do you see the way she managed to avoid the question, but still sort of half said something that might may, maybe mean something? OK, I'm just going to show another interview now, an interview that I did with the BBC last year on this very same topic. Now, I'm not showing this in order to say, that, you know, look how I did it. I did it right. Kate did it wrong. What I'm showing you is the difference between our contexts. Because I was in the situation where I could just freely explain what I believe. And Kate's in the position where she's frightened to explain what she believes. Right, just watch this. The first thing you mentioned there was the conversion therapy ban concept. We believe that people should be free to seek counselling to pursue their own life goals. So, if, for example, a married man uh, with children, married to a woman, started experiencing homosexual attractions, and he thought to himself, I don't want to go down that road. I want to move away from these homosexual attractions. I want to maintain my relationship with my wife. I believe that man should be free to seek counselling and to seek counselling from someone who agrees with him, who says, yes, I think that is the right vision for your life. I share that. Let's see how we can take Even this forward together. Even though that's together. largely discredited, it's often a traumatic experience for people, and it's something that the Scottish Government want to ban next year. You still think that that, sh that has a place in society? Well, absolutely. I think a lot of the research that's presented on this basically is, is unreliable. It's a very poor quality. If we've got the higher quality research, it doesn't bear out. These, I mean, there's some ludicrous claims made about this. What I described then about that man seeking counselling with someone who agreed with his life decision, I mean, that's described in the Scottish Parliament routinely as a form of torture. I mean, which is laughable, utterly laughable. Well, some people but, do well, find it very traumatic, don't they? We have, you know, accounts of people who have found going through that process very damaging. Do you appreciate that, that for some people that is, is a damaging, traumatic experience? I think someone seeking a form of counselling in order to fulfil their own vision for their life it's something that people should be free to do. Now, it's obviously in the interests of activists. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like the idea of anyone thinking, I would rather not go down that route. They don't like that idea. So the, it's in their interest to present the most dramatic stories possible of the damage done and the trauma it caused, etc. Whereas I believe for a lot of people, it's a simple matter of mm -hmm. freedom in pursuing their own vision for their own life. OK. Um I say that. I would hope that my interview there did shift public opinion a little bit. I don't know how many people were watching this, but hopefully people would see that. Maybe some of them would have been open, uh, open-minded, and maybe thought, "Well, that makes sense." Actually, this conversion therapy ban it seems a bit much to me. I I'm not so sure about it. Now, I think what Kate was saying that definitely will not shift public opinion. I mean, if anything, she appeared a little, a little bit shifty through it. Now, of course, if Kate answered the question in the way I did in my interview, she would be finished. Her leadership campaign would be absolutely over, uh, maybe even her political career. She would be absolutely finished. Now, Kate would say maybe, you know, if I can just manage to bluff my way through these, maybe when I'm first minister, I could water down the conversion therapy ban a little bit. Well, to be honest, I'm not sure that she could. If she tried to put in a consent exception in it or to exclude trans people from it or parents or whatever, I just think that would be impossible. Can the SNP be in the position where the Conservative Party are attacking them for not being progressive enough. Remember, within the Scottish Parliament, the general assumption is that any form of so-called conversion therapy is a form of torture. 
So I believe even as First Minister, I don't see how Kate could really make any difference to this. So conclusion? Well, I'm not sure what the conclusion is, really. I would say personally, as a matter of integrity, I couldn't stand there and say that conversion therapy is, is abhorrent. I know what people mean by it, and I just couldn't say that. Uh, but I'd be interested to hear what you think. Give me your take in the comments below.